looking back there. It's beautiful. Yo guys, what is, <laughs> sorry, that was, that was dumb. That camera back there, that's one of the cameras we're talking about today, but today guys, we are talking about three cameras, three. My three personal favorites so far that I've ever used, the a7 III, the GH5S, and the Blackmagic Pocket 4K. Now these are three cameras that I've owned, so I'm a little bit biased, but that being said, I have owned other cameras, and these are my three favorites, and I just want to talk about why. I thought maybe some of you guys would be interested, so that's what, that's what we're doing today. I will preface this by saying that we are definitely, like, this is a, you pull them out of the box and you get kind of an initial impressions sort of review. I love these cameras so much it can't all be covered in one video, so the deep, deep dive will be spread out over several videos. And in fact, I even have a personal goal that by the end of this year, I would like to with confidence say that for my particular use case as a filmmaker, this is the camera that I would 100% choose to fit all of my needs. It won't be the perfect camera, but it'll be the perfect camera for me out of these three, and that's just what I hope to find more and more. Tonight again, we are filming on the Sony because again, I'm just trying to get some, get some reps with it. It's my newest camera, and so far, I really like this camera, guys. This could be my new all-time favorite, but we're gonna dive into that today. Now, real quick, this video feels weird. It feels weird to talk about cameras in a time like this. I will be completely honest with you guys. This is like totally strange, but the way that I'm looking at this and the way that I want to spin it is obviously right now buying cameras is probably not on a lot of our radars. There's a lot going on in the world, myself included. It's super stressful and, you know, it's it, we just don't know what's going to happen. Um, in fact, before anyone comments, the wife's got me growing a quarantine mustache. It looks terrible, but hey, that's what she wants and so we're giving it to her. <laughs> but I guess the point being is that the reason I'm making this video, guys, is doing this, making videos, talking about cameras, using my camera cameras to get creative it brings me a lot of like personal peace you know it helps with a lot of the anxiety that we're feeling right now at least personally it helps me and so I guess I just want to make this video to you know not advise you necessarily to go buy a camera right now but in the future maybe there's some nuggets in this video and maybe this is just a chance for you to come listen to someone's opinion about some cameras and maybe take your mind off of everything that's going on right now so I just want to preface this video with that because this video feels weird. It feels weird to talk about cameras in a time light right now, but at the same time, it just feels like, you know, sometimes it's the, the little things and the things that don't make sense that in the times where nothing makes sense, they make the most sense. Did that make sense? Do I need to do it? Motivational speaker? Do I, is that what I need to be doing here? But anyway, let's get on into it and let's talk about some cameras. <laughs> For this first video, guys, I've picked four categories. We're gonna go over these four categories. I'm gonna try and change my position in the office, getting creative, being stuck at home with all these different lighting situations. We're gonna to try to go through each of these topics. And again, the whole point of this video is you just pulled these cameras out of the box. Me, I guess myself, I'm looking back in time, at least with some of these cameras and saying, I've just pulled them out of the box. How do I feel about these certain topics and what really stood out to me right away? Initial impressions, what did I love about these cameras? What did I hate? Because some of these things we hate initially and then we use them and we're like, yeah, that was that's those are fine. We've learned to overcome them. They're not a big deal or they're a big deal and they suck. And they're reasons that you maybe don't pick up that camera next time. So for each topic, I'm gonna to try to personally rank them. And then as each video progresses, again, eventually I want to hopefully have a decisive conclusion on which camera would be my number one winner for the end of 2020. I'm trying to go extra energy tonight, staying hydrated, trying to stay healthy. So for this first topic, guys, we are talking about physical ergonomics, holding the camera, pulling it out of the box, things that I like, things that I don't like. Buttons, screens, on-off switches, that's what we're going through in this topic. Now right out of the gate, I think if I had to give a winner, it would probably go to the Panasonic GH5S. Overall, I really like those buttons. Keep in mind, those are probably the buttons I'm most familiar with, but I just find that that in combo with a lot of good customization options, as well as the flip out screen, is kind of the overall Perfect package, again, it depends on what you're doing stuff for, but I do think that overall ergonomics, at least from a buttons perspective, probably goes to the Panasonic. They're all pretty close, but let's talk about some things that stand out to me. On the Panasonic, right above the record button, you have your white balance, your ISO, and your exposure compensation buttons. I love these. Every camera should have these. 
These buttons are quick and easy to access. You can change your white balance, you can change your ISO, you can change your exposure, compensation, whatever the case may be. It's all right there and it just makes it quick, it just makes it easy. I love having those buttons there. I've missed those on the Sony. Blackmagic also has something similar right up above the record button. You have all the options to change your exposure and I just think it is a brilliant design. Sony, I appreciate all your custom buttons, but I feel like those you could have just baked in because that's what my most of my front two custom buttons are set to anyway. So as far as your knobs and dials go, I just like the feel of the Panasonic. Again, guys, it feels more responsive, the clickiness, the buttons. I personally just think these are the best buttons. The grip is nice and deep. All in all, this is my favorite camera to hold and use, but none of them are really that bad in this department. If I had to pick a second place or runner up, I think I think, as far as physical ergonomics go, I think I would give it to the Sony simply due to the size. The size of the Sony is fantastic. I love how small it is. As soon as I started picking up this camera again, the GH5S, and especially the Blackmagic, I have to tell you guys, they felt huge. They felt chunky. This camera feels like a complete walk in the park in comparison to both of those, and it feels tiny. Some people don't like that. I personally really like, it. you know, the smaller it is, the better, because of course you can add cages, you can add stuff to it if you would like, but I like the form factor of the Sony's. That being said, I don't know if I would go smaller than the Sony, but it is my smallest camera and I definitely like that about it for sure. Sony buttons are fine. The Blackmagic buttons are fine. But again, I just like the Panasonic's buttons, given buttons and ergonomics to the Panasonic. The other thing I want to talk about in ergonomics real quick though, is your screens. I personally really like like these flip screens. If because I'm someone who's often in front of the camera, having a fully articulating flip screen is my personal favorite. But after using the Sony, I must say I understand now why people like the flip up screen. I really like it. If I'm behind the camera, honestly, that screen is my favorite screen just because it feels more aligned with the lens. It doesn't feel like you, you know, you can get both hands on each side of the camera. I personally actually like the Sony screen the best if it's like, you know, if I'm behind the camera and I'm directing and shooting and filming it all. But if I'm in front of the camera like we are now, I've got a huge monitor rigged up and it's just kind of inconvenient and there's not really a great solution. The monitor works fine, but again, you know, it's 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 kind of give and take. So personally, fully articulating screen is my favorite, but the Sony is a close second. And then the Blackmagic, of course, is last in this category because, you know, it just doesn't even move. It's a beautiful monitor. It looks really great, but if you can't see it from above or in front of you, you know, what good does that do you? I have found typically, guys, when I'm using that camera, I have my small HD monitor on top simply because that just allows me to see at more angles, which I think are the most interesting angles to film at. Shooting low, I love shooting low. And then, you know, if I'm in front of the camera, you just gotta have a monitor. So personally, I just don't even use the Blackmagic monitor all that much, which kind of bums me out because it is beautiful. It's a great screen. It's so pretty, but... Yeah, it's just, it just doesn't get used. Okay, I could go way more into ergonomics and maybe I should make it its whole other video, but let's real quickly touch on one other kind of buttony physical thing that really stands out to me. On off switches. Now y'all are going, Jake, oh my God, are you kidding me? You're talking about on off switches? Panasonic has it right on top. It's not a bad place. Um, it's fine. It's not my favorite. It's not my least favorite, but it's it's definitely a good option to just kind of have it right there. It's right next to the thumb, but personally, it's not my favorite place for it. The Sony actually wins the on off switch button department um, because it's just right there on your pointer on the shutter right next to the shutter. The G9, which was my first professional mirrorless camera, had this as well and you just kind of flicked that and started shooting. If it's going to be a photo video hybrid, it just makes good sense to just put it right there. I don't know. Again, other people might say differently, but I just really like it. So I'm giving first place on the on off switch to the Sony, second place to the Panasonic, and then I guess a close third to the, you know, Blackmagic because it's just a switch right there, which again, they're not bad. We're really picking hairs when it comes to on off switches. But personally, I love when they're right there up next to the shutter button. Overall, physical ergonomics goes to the Panasonic, probably with a close second to the Sony for my personal line of work, third to the Blackmagic. But again, they're all pretty close on ergonomics because they're all good at different things. That's my personal list as far as the physicality of the cameras. All right, guys. And with that, category number two, we are going to be talking 
menu systems and overall usability. Again, this is just out of the box. I'm gonna bag on Sony, everyone bags on Sony. They're the hardest menu to use. But the point is, and the point is obvious, no matter what camera you have, no matter what camera you're using, they all can work, right? Like the Sony menu system, even after just a couple of weeks, I'm feeling really good in it. But again, tonight we're talking about just kind of pulling your camera out for the first time, what stands out to you, what's best, and you know, that's that's just how we're doing it tonight. So as far as overall menu usability goes, most people would put this in ergonomics, I'm keeping them separate tonight, but as far as ergonomics and menus go, my first place, of course, goes to the Blackmagic Pocket 4K. No surprise, guys. No, everyone's talked about this. The menu system is just like so easy. It's like using an iPhone, maybe even easier. I mean, it feels like you're using a toy when you're setting up that camera, and that's not a bad thing, right? Like we are all <laughs> children at heart, and the easier it is for us to use, the better. And I will just say, in my experience, I've been blown away at the ability for that camera to give you complete control, like really good control, and yet at the same time you have these menus that are very in-depth, very detailed, and super simple, right? Time and time again with that camera, I've just been blown away by how simple and elegant the menus are, yet how much control you have. They're so much control in there, you can really do just about anything you would need on a professional video shoot to monitor your video, to do audio, to, you know, do false colors, zebras, whatever, you know, focus peaking, whatever it is, like, all of it's in the menu, changing frame rates, there's custom buttons, you know, you name it, it's there, but it's so easy to use and it's so intuitive and it just feels like, oh my gosh, am I like missing something? Is there more to this camera? And then you're like, well, I'm filming with it and it's easy to use and I've got total control. Oh my gosh, and my image looks great too. What a concept. So yes, I'm a total Blackmagic fan when it comes to the menu itself. Ergonomics, it's not, again, like physical ergonomics, not my favorite. Menu systems, they hit it out of the park. Second place and third place, guys, I think I have to give second place to the Panasonic just because they are better than Sony, but again, Take it with a little bit of a grain of salt. If you're used to one, used to the other, used to something, whatever the case may be, whatever you're used to is gonna be harder to switch to the other just because they're both slightly complicated. I think Panasonic is still quite a bit better. Sony has been a learning curve, but again, once you know where stuff is, once you know what you're doing, once you have your custom buttons set, it's not that big of a deal. But because we have to pick winners and we have to do kind of a rating here, Blackmagic is first. Panasonic is second, Sony is third, but second and third is kind of nebulous for this one. But I mean, we're filming on the Sony tonight and you know, I don't, I don't think it's that bad. Could it be much better? Of course. Blackmagic has set the new standard for easy yet super user like enhanced menus. But again, you know, that's neither here nor there. You can still get great images with all three cameras. And for this next one, guys, we're getting dramatic. We're getting moody. <laughs> Love this, it looks so crazy. <laughs> For category number three tonight, we are talking image quality like within the first little bit of using it. As you guys will see, and as I have full confidence in, no matter what camera you're using, at least in 2020, like and of these three cameras, guaranteed, the video that's coming out of the camera is looking great for all three of these. It's just, you don't need to worry about that. But I will say, if you're just picking these up, pulling them out of the box and starting to use them, I do have a list on what I think looks the best, but again, this is kind of a subjective category, so take it with a grain of salt, but I'm gonna give you my opinion on what I felt was the easiest to just pull out and look fantastic with pretty much not a lot of effort. <laughs> Personally, guys, I feel that the winner of this category, and probably this will be the long-term winner as well, as far as image quality goes, is the Black Magic. no surprise. It just looks really good, guys. It shoots a very nice flat film log profile that I think grades really easily if you get your white balance correct. Although I don't think it's like the easiest thing to grade, I still think it looks really good and you've got a lot of room to play with, whether you're shooting in RAW or ProRes. And time and time again, I keep using that camera just thinking like, oh my gosh, this looks so good. And it doesn't take a lot of work to have it looking really good. And then if you really massage it, it can look just phenomenal. So that's my winner for this category. And I think it'll be the long-term winner as well. Image quality goes to the Blackmagic Pocket 4K. Second place, guys, personally, in my findings, I'm giving this one to the Panasonic as well. I just think that overall, picking them up out of the box, using it, the Panasonic's V-Log and the natural profile, 
has looked really good for me. I've been able to capture some great images and I felt confident with my colors, my white balance, all of that. And it just feels like it's really easy to grade. And for example, the V-Log, typically I slap on the Rec. 709 conversion LUT that Panasonic gives you. A little bit of grading here, a little bit of grading there, nothing too much. And I think it still looks really, really nice. Again, this one's subjective, so take it with a grain of salt. And of course that leaves third place to the Sony. And I, I know for a fact that there are incredible images that can come out of this camera. I mean, I think even today, I think I'm already starting to really dial in how I like shooting this camera, but I don't think that it has been the easiest experience. There's so many picture profiles, gamuts, settings, things that you can control. And I just haven't totally fallen in love with a lot of the picture profiles I've tried. I think this one might be my favorite. We're using James Matthews profile, which he just posted the other day. Again, I'm just trying to try a whole bunch of different ones. But I have just found overall, right out of the box image from the Sony has not been my favorite. It's been kind of a bugger to get to figure out. And honestly, it's only 8 bits, so when you mess it up, you kind of mess it up, and sometimes you can't save it. But again, guys, like some of my absolute favorite creators and really like filmmakers of all time, they all shoot on Sony's, and the look that they're getting is absolutely amazing. Josh Yo, James Matthews, Peter Lindgren, Daniel Schiffer, Becky and Chris. I mean, the list goes on. I love all of their looks so much. I think they look so good. So you can get phenomenal images with the Sony, but at least it seems like it's gonna take a little bit more chiseling work from me. Blackmagic, Panasonic, Sony, image quality out of the box. We'll address that one again later for kind of the long-term portion. But anyway, last category. All right, guys, and the last topic category yeah the last category that we're talking about tonight is photos this one's kind of just an easy last topic because i think i've rambled way too much in this video we'll cover more in future videos but which of these cameras takes photos and which of these cameras photos do i like better as i'm sure you guys have guessed and of course it's obvious the loser in this category is the blackmagic pocket 4k the photo button, i don't know if i'm doing something wrong guys but the photo button doesn't even work for me and i'm not sure that it does work? I don't know, I'm really confused by their photo button, but but that being said, it does shoot 4K and it shoots a really nice raw file. If you cranked up the shutter speed, you could probably shoot like 60 frames a second. You could probably get pretty decent still frames from it, but again, wouldn't recommend it. If you're buying that camera, you clearly want to shoot video and only video, and that's the camera I would recommend for that. You're probably not interested in being a hybrid shooter, and that's great, right? Like honestly, the only reason, like, I don't know, pho photography's kind of been a new like thing that I found recently that I'm really enjoying. I'm really having fun with photography, but you know, maybe a couple years ago I would have told you, yeah, that's not that important, and I probably would have picked the Pocket as my overall winner, but you know, things have changed. I like them both, so Pocket 4K gets third place in this category. For second place, and this is, this one's, this is actually kind of surprisingly close for me. I'm obviously putting the GH5S in second place for photos. It's only 10 megapixels, it's only micro four thirds, and all in all, even though I have taken some of my favorite photos of all time with that camera, I still have to give first place to the Sony, mostly due to the fact that you're shooting full frame photos, which looks so good. Full frame is a thing, guys. It looks really cool, especially in photos. Like video, I think that that's kind of, it just depends, it's personal preference, you know, which I still think it looks better, but it's not as apparent, whereas for photos, full frame photos just look really cool, I think. I really like them. Files coming out of the Sony are absolutely awesome. You've got tons of dynamic range in the shadows and the highlights. I have always been super impressed with the amount of color and dynamic range coming out of the GH5S's photos, but... I, I think Sony edges out slightly. That one's a little bit closer than it should be, but the real kicker, the real kind of punch in the face is the megapixel count. When it comes to photos, the Sony photos, I think have great color, great dynamic range, and then they're also much higher resolution. I could be wrong, but I believe the Sony is 24 megapixels and the GH5S is only 10, which for me who only posts to Instagram, that's not a big deal, which is why I've liked the GH5S because it's a great video camera and a pretty decent photography camera for thumbnails and Instagram, but the Sony, it takes some really nice photos. I've been having a ton of fun with photography since buying this camera. So as far as photos go, first place Sony, second place Panasonic, closer than you might think, just depends on what you like. 
and then obviously third place, Black Magic. So what is the point? Well, guys, that's all I've got for you today. Again, this will be a continued series. We're going to do a lot more of these. We're going to make more of these videos. I just wanted to preface you guys with kind of my thoughts on these cameras right out of the box, what impressed me the most, what I liked the most. I will say overall, probably the funnest slash coolest slash most enjoyable camera to just pick up out of the box and use probably was the Pocket 4K. It just looked great. The menu was really cool. Um, all in all, just a super awesome camera. If you're thinking about getting one of those and you want to do like doc making, indie doc making, indie filmmaking, short film, you know, narrative work, whatever the case may be. That's a really, really solid option, and it's the cheapest option of them all. So, but you know, with that kind of weighted bias aside, you know, having had a lot more experience with cameras since buying the Sony, the Sony's been an absolute blast as well because I knew that it was going to be a little bit of a, a, a wrestle. I was going to have to get in there and kind of, you know, get in dirty with this camera, and I have. And I think that going in with more skills and understanding of how cameras work. This camera has been super fun to pull out of the box and use as well. So all of them are good, but the point of this series is by the end, I just want to give you guys some insight on why you might pick one over the other. So out of the box, you know, I think I'm going with Black Magic, but that may not be the long term play. So subscribe, like and comment, you know, let me know what you're thinking down below. There will be more videos like this. You guys stay safe, you know, do all do your due diligence, whatever's going on. The world's in a crazy state right now, and I'm going to try to keep making stuff for you guys because it's just fun. I just want to keep making stuff for me, keep me sane, try and help keep you guys sane. And yeah, that's all I have. Stay safe and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.